she's not bounded to pay everything before she's released? So what happens is we have bills and bonds men. Okay. If she has a five hundred thousand, it could be in a form of money. Are still on the hit with nutrient TV best news and entertainment around the globe. Hadja for real won't be jailed for 95 years if she names the big fish in the enterprise. US based prosecutor. News and details. Viewers, we all know what happened to Hadja for real in the UK. Yes, and yet she is still in the custody of the police people in US. And now she has been given the opportunity. To just mention the kind of people she was doing that business with. Just fish them out and you'll be set free. This is what her lawyer, lawyer called Lawyer Evelyn Ebenezer, appeared to a US prosecutor and also a Supreme Court attainer. Just altered out that if Hadja Farrell is able to just mention these people's name out, she will be set free. Let's go and watch the video. Lawyer, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Frank. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, lawyer. Pacho Bibia Boko, dear. Yamia Dumboko, now what you saying? Pacho Nyankopa Dumbibia Bibia Boko. Lawyer, uh, when we go straight to the uh, United States Attorney's Office, that is the Southern District of New York, you can Southern District now, to the benefit of those who are watching it, the, South, the Southern District of New York has got to do with Manhattan, it's got to do with the Bronx, it's got to, so all those areas that are within that region falls under the Southern District, and um, that is where the statement is coming from. Lawyer, um, there have been a lot of confusion looking, reading the press statement, especially the, um, the allegations that have been made and also the possible maximum sentence to each allegation. Before we go to you giving us the better understanding of it, when you read the press release from the state attorney, what was your first impression? Yeah, thank you very much. I think when it comes to legal legal matters, it can be confusing and very scary. But when you understand the terminology of what is going on, see, it's because this individual is a little bit uh, famous or popular. Okay. That is why a few things have been hyping. But this kind of allegations goes on almost every day. I don't know whether you recall, in 2020, there was a Ghanaian lady, Deborah Mensa, that also had and about eight people that were also uh, indicted, and they pled guilty to some of the charges, mm -hmm. and some were sentenced 50 months, 72 months. So this is very common, as long as we have internet and other stuff. So what, simply, what this simply means is, there was a what we call a seal indictment, and the seal indictment is when the prosecutor Okay, do the investigation. When there is an investigation, if there is a reason for them to believe a crime is being committed, okay. the federal law allows that you set up a panel, a, a jury, a grand jury. Okay. The grand jury is one-sided form of proceedings. The okay. prosecutor with the investigators, what they've got it, meet with the grand jury, which is usually nine people, nine men and women, lay men and women. And they tell them the story. Ghana, or they say, you're born to call you. Or by what they say, and if I say, or you A, B, C, D, and E. Now, say, and so they run it, so they say, Dipani, you did say, Dipani, A, B, C, D, and E. Then you have to vote what we call true bill or no bill. Okay. And the, the prosecutor will always bring up those charges and investigation, what they have entailed. Mm -hmm. Then the grand jury, when we say it's a seal indictment, which means it's secret, sometimes you don't even know you are being investigated. Okay. They don't tell anybody. Just the LDR and a few people will be working on it. So this is what exactly happened to this individual. They were investigating him many years ago. Wow. So they come to a place where they become confident that they have all that they need to prove the charges under Title 18 of USC. C-1343. That was what they were charged under. The other subs, they charged them under. 
So they panel a grand jury, and the grand jury came out with true bail. That is a seal indictment. And for them to unseal that indictment, once they get the true bill, they will ask a judge to unseal the indictment. So now no longer a secret. It becomes public. And the individual, if it is in the jurisdiction, which is if the individual is in the United States, they will go and arrest him based on the indictment. It is just a charge. Okay. okay. It is just allegation. It's a charge. The person is not guilty until the government proves its case beyond reasonable doubt. Mm. So if the person is outside United States but committed the crime in United States, then if United States have a treaty with the state or the country which the person resides, they will begin extradition proceedings. That is why this individual, because United States have a treaty with United Kingdom, has it with Ghana and so many countries, because he, she was in United Kingdom, they began extradition proceedings and they extradited her to United States. When the individual gets here, the next step is they arrange the individual. That is where they ask you whether you are guilty or not guilty. And in this case, I believe the individual has pled not guilty. And they, they will set a bond for you. Mm. So with setting the bond, there's a lot of things that go into whether to release you or not to release you. But it's my understanding that with this individual case, she was released on the bond of 500000 That yes. does not mean you have to pay 500000 According to the, the section for bond and bail, bail and bond, you can pay a 10% of whatever bond bail is set. And lawyer. you can be released on a monitor. Lawyer, are you saying that um, the 500000 that uh, which is the bond of, uh, that is the bail, she's not bounded to pay everything before she's released? So what happens is we have bills and bondsmen. Okay. If she has the 500000 it could be in the form of money. It could be in the form of assets. Okay. She can do that. Okay. But usually, the system is saying that we have people like middlemen. So we have bail and bondsmen that always require 10% of whatever is set. Okay. And because he asked her 500000 she can get a bail or bondsman who will take 50000 and put up the bond for her. Okay. Which means this middle, this middle company or middlemen are telling the court that we will make sure she will appear in court. Okay. Okay. And they will also request electronic monitor. So this individual, if she is out of jail, which means they will also put electronic monitor that will limit her, her mobility in the United States. Okay. Okay. I think it gives a better an, um, an understanding that when it comes to the 500,000 bill that uh, is said to have been put on her before the bill was granted. Now, let's, let's, let's take a look at um, something. Um, from 2013, as the statement said, up to 2019, she is alleged to have been involved with a criminal enterprise by name, the Enterprise, based in the West Africa that committed a series of fraud against individuals and businesses in the United States, including Roman scans. This revelation, does this suggest to say, uh, you being a prosecutor, does this suggest to say that the investigative body is one way or the other aware of possible people that that uh, um, form this particular the the said enterprise is it possible absolutely it is possible and you know see this is what people do not know especially people that get involved in this kind of conspiracy and this kind of fraudulent activities. See, you cannot defraud United States citizens and go scot-free. Mm. The fact that they have not come to your time doesn't mean nobody is investigating you. Like wow. I told you, there was an in individual group of this same enterprise. Eight of them were indicted and they were convicted in 2020. They investigated them from 2014 to 2018. You realize that they were investigating this individual from 2013 to 2019. Mm. So what happened in these cases is, you know, it's one of those cases It's very difficult to get a, go against. You have to have a very competent and a very experienced 
federal criminal defense attorney to be able to help you navigate. Okay. It is not good. I do not, as a prosecutor, I will tell you, this might not go to trial because they have enough. They will have enough evidence against them. First of all, let me just talk a little bit about the law, then I'll be able to answer you clearly. Okay. So the first charge is under Section 1343, which is what United States Code. Okay? There are four elements that the prosecutor has to prove. That the defender voluntarily and intentionally devised a, and, or participated in a scheme to defraud another mm. out of money. That the defendant did so with the intent to fraud. That it was reasonable, foreseeable that the, the interstate wire communication will occur. Those things, that is why it takes so long. So they have investigated and they tracked them. And I will tell you, sometimes it could be the person thinks he's communicating with just an individual or just work. But you end up communicating with an FBI agent. So they, they might have, if the jury did voted through bail, and if they are ready and they've unsealed the indictment, it means they do have enough evidence to get this. And listen to this. The reason they, they have this individual who is popular and famous, I, would, I can tell you how it's going to end. Mm. They're going to give all the evidence that they have on her to her lawyer. Okay. Her lawyer is going to review what we call discovery. The lawyer is going to review it. Then they develop a strategy. Okay. The lawyer will tell her to admit some, and then they will work with the attorney general's office. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what usually happens is they try to mitigate the sentences. I know the sentences of the, the fifth counts all accumulate to maximum of 95 years. Yes. I'm yet to find out somebody serving 95 years in this kind of uh, international wire fraud and mail fraud. Okay. Usually, they plead guilty and they use them as a leverage. So they're going to use this individual as a leverage to get all those involved. If she start talking and cooperating with the federal government, then they might reduce the sentencing and they, they can drop some of the charges and you play to one charge and definitely they will not ask for 20 years, but it's usually ask for 8, 10 years. Okay? okay, sometimes with probability of parole, and after that they give you some what we call probation, probationary time. Okay, so if she decides to cooperate with the uh, with the federal government, with the uh, with the justice department, then he, she might probably name names of who are the heads, the big guns in this enterprise scheme. Mm. So so sometimes they can use her as your main witness to go after the big fish. Okay. And if she happens to be the big fish, she can help them to unfold, unravel all this, that this enterprise mm. does. So that is, that is what it is. So everything that is going on, it can go to trial. If her attorney wants to challenge it, of course, it's her right to go to trial and defend herself before a jury of her own peer. Mm. But usually, some of these things, the, the, the evidence is so overwhelming that you begin to negotiate, begin to talk what we call in criminal law, plea bargaining with the prosecutor and see how best to go forward. Mm. And she will help, she can help the Justice Department to get into whosoever were involved in this. So this enterprise, anytime one of them is, is, is indicted, it, it does a blow to their organization, to their illegal organization. Lawyer, uh, whilst you were talking, you did indicate that this case might not go for trial. We are not trying to get into the case in detail, but we are trying to look at, you know, um, make references to some of the things that have happened in the past and trying to relate it to the current uh, uh, um, um, issue that we have on board. What did you mean by saying this case might not go um, uh, m might not go to trial. By saying might not go to trial, I have looked at the previous record. Like I said, a lot of people are indicted and extradicted from West Africa and Africa 
it goes on all the time. Mm -hmm. Like this one just have this big light because she is a popular figure. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is it might not go to trials because the the, the government council or the, the, the United States Attorney General okay, office in Southern District of New York, they have evidence. The FBI has given them the evidence they have on this individual. They will, by law, they will have to provide everything they're going to use against her to her attorney. Okay. And if attorney reviews the documents and find out that they are able to meet their burden beyond reasonable doubt, mm. sometimes the next strategy is the reason we go to trial is because we don't agree with the charges. But okay. if there is a, there is a, uh, 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 there is a reason, there is no reasonable doubt. If the, the government attorney can prove beyond reasonable doubt, and you see the evidence and they are clear, sometimes they have videotapes, sometimes they have communications, audio, sometimes they have wire transfer with your signature on it, and they can trace your, 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 your hardware and software. Mm. Those become so clear to your attorney, then your attorney begins to talk to the government counsel, okay, I can help you get A, B, C, D, and E if you help me do this. So at the end of the day, you, begin, you, you plead guilty to some of the charges, or sometimes all of the charges. Based and on they the give evidence. Two sentence, so which means it does not go to trial. Okay. Unless he says, I didn't do it, I am innocent, I'm going to fight this, then we panel a jury, then we have a full-blown trial. But I will tell you, eight out of ten wire fraud kind of cases always end up negotiation, plea bargaining. Okay. And they will probably, she will be, if she will be able to use them, be able to help them get other people that are involved. So this this can go on for pretty a long time. Wow. But I, 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 I doubt and I can confidently tell you that we will not have a full setup jury going on a trial. Is it the case that normally when it goes to a full jury trial, that is where they accumulated um, based on the allegations that have been made and found guilty, the person is then looked at a possible 95-year sentence? <laughs> The United States, United, yes, even though that is what the law said, 95. Okay. But the United States uh, federal government have a sentencing guidelines. Before okay. something sentence. In this condition, it's, it's not possible that they're going to throw all the book at her to serve 95 years. She's going to do some jail time. Okay. Depending on her attorney. She's going to do some jail time, but I doubt as a, a prosecutor and as an attorney in the United States where the laws really work and work perfectly, I doubt they're going to throw 95 years at her. She will do some jail time, but it will not, it, it will not go beyond the 20. It depends on how she cooperates. If she cooperates well, then they can talk about reduced sentence and also restitution. If you realize in her charges, there have been a for future of some of her assets and other stuff have been frozen. So there's a lot of things, there are a lot of mitigating circumstances that can be used to reduce her sentence. Even if she decided I'm going to challenge every, every allegation and every uh, count and they go to trial, it's not necessarily means that she's going to go through the 95 years. It's not necessary. At the end of the day, it's the judge that makes that decision. The prosecutor can recommend, okay, six counts. It all accumulates a maximum of 95 years. Your Honor, give her 95 years. At the end of the day, the judge is going to look at other mitigating circumstances. Okay. And the judge will look at her background, her, her country of origin, and everything and and put that into consideration that what causes individual to commit this act. And all of them comes into play, and the judge can reduce the sentences. But what I'm trying to communicate to you right now is um, it is something that those who are involved need to be careful. The fact that your name is not up today doesn't mean it can be up tomorrow. And as long as you've committed a crime and you are found within the enterprise, be sure that you'll surely be found. 
ensure that you can you can yeah you can be called you can be indicted just as she has been indicted and guess what ghana can help you because ghana has signed a treaty with the united states if they find out that you are part of this enterprise and you have taken uh, vulnerable men and women's money you are they're going to bring you and ghana government can do anything they will have to give you up because they signed a treaty hmm. <sighs> as a prosecutor, as a lawyer, as a, um, a lawyer who practices at the Supreme, United States Supreme Court, with all these insight and education, what has actually triggered this high rise when it comes to these schemes in recent times, especially from the year 2000 up to this year, uh, just just in February, we had about seven Ghanaians who were also, you know, sentenced to various degrees of uh, all these crimes in the uh, in the state of Ohio, and um, that release was also made according to the uh, um, the attorney's state, and it was released here in Columbus. So, what has prompted this rise from that period, 2000 up to about 24 year period, does? What has prompted this high rise of these schemes? I think it's because of the, the electronic and the internet. It's because of the internet in, and or the whole thing about the internet and the electronic and all those stuff. It becomes very easy for people who are very good with these electronics devices to play games and use those devices to defraud others. It is easy for people to do that. And that is the right the rise of it all is because of the internet aid, social media aid. Some people have decided I'm not going to work. I can sit in my house, sit in my whole comfort of my home and make money. And what they forget is that whilst you're trying to make this money out of fraudulent means other people also set up to guess what? Investigate them. Mm. Hmm. Ah. Lawyer Ebenezer Apieje, Deputy Prosecutor in Mahoney County in the United States. He's also a, um, a lawyer. Uh, he has a background in immigration law as well. And uh, he has a license to operate um, to be a lawyer in the Supreme Court of the United States. He's dealt with so many cases, both as a prosecutor, as, a, as an attorney, and he has educated us on what exactly the issue is and possibilities. He's not, he's not judging. He's not going ahead of, you know, the prosecution. He's not going ahead of the case. He's just giving us um, the better understanding of possibilities and how we can all, you know, understand what it is. All the speculations that Hajia Faria will go all these years, 75 years, 90 years. This is the education that we all have to understand and also understand that the rule of law in the United States speaks and it speaks for all of us. Lawyer, um, I like uh, I like to say thank you. Unless you have something else to to add up, and then uh, we we end this conversation. Oh, the only thing I will add to it is that uh, whilst I was listening to one of the comment commentaries on this whole issue, which I know is all over the place, in uh, I overheard one of the politicians lay blame on the government of Ghana and the former president of Ghana, that is because of their bad administration that has caused this individual. Mm -hmm. Listen, I just want to say this. You, 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 you can blame not everybody in Ghana who doesn't have a job, just decide that I'm going to defraud other people. Okay. We should not allow entertainment as a nation. The fact that our, our system is not up to par does not mean that we should encourage other people to go and defraud other people in other countries. Mm. So I would just like to encourage young, boy, young men and young women that there are, there's always alternatives. Where there is a way, there, there is a way. There are always alternatives. Desist from this kind of activities because it will eventually catch up on you. You cannot defraud the United States and go scot-free. They will come after you, and they will get you. 
The fact that they are not doing anything right now doesn't mean you are smarter than them. When they want you, they will get you when, how they want to get you. So I want to encourage young men and young women in Ghana to desist from this kind of activities because eventually it will catch up with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, lawyer Apia, Ebenezer Apia J. Um, he's an assistant prosecutor at Mahoney County and, um, and also an attorney. He has an immigration background. Immigration law has helped a lot of immigrants in the United States to be able to have peace of mind and live in living in the United States. He, is also, he also has the license to um, you know, uh, operate in the Supreme Court of the United States. Lawyer Ebenezer Apia J., thank you very much for your time and uh, we are very grateful thank you so much mr journalist <laughs> all right so um so the up and down the misunderstanding concerning hajia for real issues we've spoken to uh, somebody who is in depth somebody who understands what the laws are in the united states ladies and gentlemen if you go anywhere and then you hear people you know politicians trying to publicize um politicize this particular issue know how to address the issue and then have a better understanding of what the issues are. This has been Hello Frank. My name is Frank Intiamo Williams. I'm going to see you same time on the next topic as we zoom into the next issue of for today's discussion. What just passed by is the issue that has got to do with Hajia for real. Mona is now in the United States facing, you know, a list of allegations that are coming from the FBI. The FBI also extend the appreciation to the United States uh, Marshal Service, the National Extradition United, uh, Unit, the United States um, Customs and Border Protection, and the FBI Legal Attache in London as well. So all these departments came together to ensure that Hajia for real was brought to the United States to face all these allegations. We'll follow the story. Whatever it is, we'll definitely go back to lawyer if we have any misunderstanding as the case proceeds. Okay, viewers, we heard what happened in the video. The $2 million scammer, Hadia for real, has given the opportunity, this great opportunity for her. And if she skipped this opportunity, she should, she has to just spend the rest of her life in prison because you are asked to pay five hundred thousand dollars. You don't have, and now you're given the opportunity to just mention the names, just say it with your mouth. Maybe Ajoa is part, Kofi is part, Akosia is part, and you'll be set free. If you don't like this, if you don't like this. What do you want for real? If you don't like this, then what do you want, baby girl? If I were to be you, I would just mention the names of those people because I know. You cannot afford that $500,000. Who would do? Okay, I guess when you were in UK, someone afforded the $200,000 for you. So you are waiting for that same person to just afford the $500,000 for you. That's there. Yes, don't worry. That person's name is there. <laughs> for real. But to be honest with you, just mention the names and be free. You don't have to be punished for this alone. Once you're not the only person engaged in this. Viewers, drop your opinion for comments. Drop your opinion on comment section. As I always say, I will read it out as I'll be reading people's thoughts to you. Don't just forget to like, share, subscribe. Follow us on all social media plus and you you be blessed. As you're always blessed. What's my name? My Mr. Christa is the name. Thanks for watching. <laughs>